Welcome back to PyWatch YouTube and today a video about testing the random module. A couple of weeks ago I had a video about picking random emails with random.sample and in this video I'm going to look at strategies how to test that code. So I'm here at my terminal and last video which you can see here uh, that code uh, was basically this more or less and then running random's sample function on the emails which using the K keyword argument to specify the number of emails, but I just made it into two functions so it's easy to uh, import and test. So two functions, one just um, parses the Macaroo CSV, skips the header, and um, uses the list comprehension to get all the emails, and then the random the get random emails is basically a wrapper around random.sample. So let's write some tests for this. Um, the first go was this which uh, of course I used a bit of ChatGPT for. See my video here, how I use ChatGPT. Uh, I blackified it, so then I got this. So just a bit of formatting. Uh, if you're not automating your formatting, you're really missing out. So um, yeah, I also have a video on using pre-commit to do it on commit. You can see that video here. Although this is fine, there's another way you can do this. So in this test, we assert that if we call get random emails, um, we get three emails um, as per the argument here. Mm -hmm. And we assert that all the emails from the sample set are in the sample emails, which is a fixture, which is defined here. Right? What we can also do is use random.seed to kind of fixate what random returns. So maybe it's best to first demo that in the shell. So I can say numbers. Let's cast that to a list so we can see what that gives us. And we can use random.sample. And not surprisingly, that gives us a different result every time, right? Now, what happens if we do random.seed123? At this point, we fixate. Oops, well, we would have to actually use the seed before calling um, render.sample every time, right? So I put the seed again, and I get the same result, right? Use the seed again, and I get the same result. Use the seed again, get the same result. If I forget to use the seed, then of course it starts to do other things as well. Although we might get the same sequence. I'm not sure about that actually. Yeah, yeah. So it actually, uh, you could use sample many times, and then it still follows the same pattern. So you get the same results. So that's actually really cool. So if you bring that back to the test, um, what I then did, I refactored the test. And now I have a fixture, uh, set random seed. I don't have to pass this fixture anywhere into any function because it uses how to use true. And fixtures that have out of use equals true uh, are called automatically uh, before each test. Um, I mean, the scope of fixture by default is function. And uh, unless you give it scope equals module or session, then a fixture would be used for um, a whole set of tests, but not setting the scope explicitly at defaults to a function level. But anyway, we have only one test function anyway, right? So out of use equals true. This fiction just uh, kicks in. And then the result becomes predictable. Looking at the test then, um, it does use the sample emails fixture explicitly. That's just to get some uh, data. And then I only had to inspect one time what the result was giving me back. So I can show that again. So that was email one, three, and five. So I hard-coded that in the expected emails. And yeah, this is now hard-coded thanks to the random seed. So it's predictable, right? So we can now, instead of doing like the initial test of confirming that all the random emails were in the sample emails, which was not super concrete, uh, this test is more explicit, right? It's um, it's, yeah, it's more specific. Um, so now, thanks to the seed, I can hard code these emails one, three, and five. And that should work. So yeah, takeaway, 
you can use uh, random.seed to make random any function from the random module predictable. I mean, this would also work with um, rent int, for example. So pretty much works with any function in the random module. So there you go. You saw a way of making random predictable, which is useful for your test, and uh, how I refactored a test to use that, um, yeah, to make the test better, in my opinion. Hope that's helpful. If you want to see more videos on standard library modules like random, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see more videos on testing techniques and best practices using PyTest, then also comment below. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow we'll be back with another video. Cheers.